Uh, you know, it's interesting, uh, Brianna, um, like I said, she lights up a room. And we were, uh, Linda, uh, who is on the board, MD Anderson, myself, uh, G.K. Butterfield, Mike Kelly, we were trying to get this bill passed, Creating Hope Act, that Nancy Goodman uh, actually brought to my attention. This really brilliant idea. I'd like to take credit for it, but at least I can help push it through the Congress. And it incentivizes the drug companies to manufacture uh, these drugs for childhood cancer kids uh, rather than a mandate. And, and, and um, it's been a, a very successful. But getting that through the Congress was not as easy as you would think. And we had a lot, a lot of roadblocks and on both sides of the aisle and um, uh, the committees and so forth. So we brought out our secret weapon, and it was Brianna. We literally took her on the House floor in violation of the House rules and had her lobby members of Congress. And so she went up to uh, Nancy Pelosi at the, you know, on the floor at that time, and, uh, and uh, we said, you know, that's kind of a big fish if you can get her to sign on this bill. And I'll be darned if she didn't get Nancy Pelosi to sign up on the bill. <laughs> and I, th I think she may have been speaker at the time. I can't remember. But I think she said, you know, I don't normally sponsor, co-sponsor bills. And then she looked at Brianna, and her heart melted. And she said, OK, I'll, I'll sign up for that. <laughs> so we knew we had that going for us. And then, and then the names gradually climbed, we went office to office, worked very hard to get this done. And it's a real testament as to how you can accomplish something. And you can at the grassroots, all the activists here in the room, how if you really stand up for what you believe in, you can get it done. Um, and we got something that was monumental done. There really hadn't been a childhood cancer bill. Uh, we had the, the Carolyn Price Walker bill passed. This was the second piece uh, that has passed, um, and I'm proud to say that since that time, and it's only been uh, really less than a, a year, uh, we now have four uh, applications for these vouchers, which means four new drugs that will be forthcoming in the marketplace uh, for childhood cancer. Uh, that's really huge. Uh, and I was talking to Nancy about this yesterday, and she said that that's just the tip of the iceberg. Uh, that we're going to see more and more of these applications coming in, and it is going to make a difference. Uh, and, and that's what I'm so proud of. The reason we formed uh, the caucus, and the Culvers came to me when I, my first term in the Congress, and I'm just trying to find my way to the bathroom, essentially. And they said, you know, I'm going to tell you about my son, Adam, uh, who died. We have Adam's angels. And, and they really inspired me to take this cause on. And we formed this caucus with uh, then... Uh, Joe Sestak, and, the, and the, the purpose was to give children who don't have a voice in Congress a voice. There are lobbyists all over this town for special interests. There are no lobbyists for the kids. There are no lobbyists for childhood cancer. Uh, and that was the whole point, was to give them a voice, and we have. And it's been like a, I think that um, Gavin mentions our fourth year Thanks for sharing your story about Evan. I mean, that is, uh, and you hear these stories all the time. I hear them all the time. Um, and I know Chris does as well, being the co-chair, and, and, uh, and uh, you want to do something about it. And I know we're going to hear from a lot of medical experts uh, as well. Uh, it's a fulfilling line of work for them, as Dr. Levy and I talked about, but it's also very painful uh, to see children in pain. It's fulfilling when you can save uh, you know, their lives. I and mean, that, that's the whole point of, of what we're trying to do uh, and make a difference in saving lives. We're going to hear about survivorship today as well. A lot of issues related to that and legislation uh, pending on that. Uh, Nancy's going to talk about the Creating Hope Act. And we're also going to hear from Dell uh, uh, about uh, the Genome Project, which I think is going to be is a little more futuristic, but I think going to be very interesting as we study the ge genetics of this disease how we can get to the root cause of what causes childhood cancer. And it's really, from a scientific, as we sit here in the science, space, and technology room, it's very appropriate that we discuss uh, the future. And I think the future is very bright. The future is very bright to eradicating this disease once and for all. The disease that kills more children than any other cause in the world. It's not just the United States, it's in the world. Um, and so, um, I'm just proud to be here. Uh, I could recognize everybody in the room, but 
we all know each other. Uh, proud to be a, a co-chair with my good friend, Chris Van Hollen. I, I kind of joked earlier, we, uh, we, uh, we were on one of the Sunday talk shows, and we were talking to the moderator beforehand. He said, uh, okay, no, we're all on this, these issues. Well, we actually kind of agree on a lot of these issues. And he said, well, well, that's not a good thing. We need to get two more members of Congress <laughs> that, can, that can spar more. Uh, but that's our relationship, and that's the nature of this issue uh, as well. It's a very bipartisan issue. It, it's a national issue. It's actually it's a universal uh, issue. So I'm just uh, so proud to be a part of it. Thanks to all the advocates for being here for what you do uh, day in and day out. Uh, and together, we will find a cure for this. Thank you. Well, it's great to be with all of you uh, this morning, and it's great to be a partner with uh, Mike McCall uh, as co-chair of the Childhood Cancer Caucus. And I, I want to thank all of you who are here today. Brianna, thank you for uh, the example uh, you provide to everybody uh, who you meet uh, and for bringing such hope uh, to people's lives. You're an inspiration. Uh, you're also a sign of the progress we've made in terms of some of the uh, therapies and, and medicines that have allowed us to uh, treat and then hopefully conquer cancer in some cases. Uh, but we also have a room full of people who are a testament to the fact of how much farther we all have to go. And it's great to see everybody working together uh, with that uh, goal in mind. Um, Gavin and uh, Wendy, thank you for uh, your leadership uh, and creating the Evan Foundation uh, in memory of your, your son. And uh, you represent so many others in this room and around the country uh, who are working very hard uh, to try and make sure that uh, others um, can find hope uh, and a cure. And we want to make sure we work with you uh, to do exactly that. Um, I, I just want to mention a couple of uh, pieces of uh, legislation very briefly. One Mike mentioned, uh, Jackie Spears and, and all of us have joined together uh, in trying to push through a piece of legislation that helps uh, cancer survivors and those who are right now uh, dealing with the cha challenges of childhood cancer. We think it's really important uh, that people have that support uh, network uh, and adv ad advocacy group uh, to help press uh, on these issues. Uh, the other is the um, reauthorization, uh, as Mike said, of the Carolyn Price Walker uh, legislation. Uh, I had the privilege of working with Deborah Price um, when we co-sponsored that legislation together, uh, and it was Assigned by President uh, Bush, uh, we are together just as the legislation that Mike spearheaded in finding a cure was signed uh, by President Obama. And this is clearly, uh, as Mike said, something that doesn't, it's not, it's not bipartisan, it's nonpartisan, it's universal, and we need to make sure that uh, we work together to accomplish our goal. And let me, let me just end with this because we just came from a great gathering, many of us, uh, Hyundai Hope on wheels, and they uh, are a testament to the importance of having private sector contributions and investment uh, in the search for a cure to childhood cancer, making sure the researchers we're going to hear from today uh, have the tools they need, making sure hospitals uh, have the resources they need. Um, but the private sector can't do it alone. The public sector has to play its role. And of course, the National Institutes of Health and the NCI have been at the leader, they've been the leaders, they've been the forefront of investing on our behalf, on behalf of the people in this country, to try to find treatments and cures to childhood cancer. And it's absolutely essential uh, that they get the resources we need. So I hope on a, on a bipartisan basis, uh, we will replace the sequester. Uh, it is not the right way to be reducing uh, our deficit. There are other ways. I've put forward a plan. Others uh, can put forward plans. Um, but regardless of how we do it, we, we have to get it done. Because I want to I want to close with a, a statement uh, by the head of NIH, uh, Dr. Collins, uh, and here here's what he has said with respect to the sequester. And I quote: uh, Medical research in America will be slowed by this. Advances that could have happened sooner will happen later, or perhaps not at all. And this is what wakes me up in the middle of the night. End quote. That's Dr. Collins. Uh, that should keep us all up. That should wake us all up in the middle of the night uh, because, as he has told us, as a result of the sequester, about 700 promising research grants 
ones that have already been determined by peer review to have promise, have been turned down. Uh, and we all know that among those 700 uh, could well be uh, ones that relate directly to helping people with diseases, including uh, help in terms of conquering uh, pediatric cancer. So I hope we will all work together to make sure uh, we reverse those very short-sighted policies that are having this uh, <coughs> negative effect on this national, in fact, international and universal goal of conquering childhood cancer and dealing with other diseases. So thank you for being part of the solution here, and um, we look forward to continuing to work with you uh, to get the job done. So right now, uh, Congressman uh, Carney is in the back uh, here. And I wanted to give, um, I guess you can applaud him. <laughs> I want to give my, my dear friend, uh, Dana Rohrbacher, we uh, sit on the Foreign Affairs Committee and the Science, Space, and Technology Committee that uh, we're sitting in here today. But I want to give Dana the opportunity just to talk to you a little bit about his experience uh, that he is currently uh, going through right now. Uh, we have a lot in common. Mike uh, has triplets and so do I, so we have a lot to share. This was my first committee room when I first uh, was elected 25 years ago. And I sat uh, way down here, because the upper was, the low was for the senior guys. Well, and now I'm a senior guy. But uh, I remember one of the first votes I, I took was uh, dealt with uh, the study of the human genome. And it was very expensive. But it was a very expensive project. And one of the things that you um, have to cope with when uh, you're a member of Congress is that you are setting priorities. And it is a difficult thing to do. And uh, 600, I think it was $600 million project. And you're voting on it, and it's going through the Science Committee, and it makes a difference of what, what's going to happen. And I thought a lot about it. I had to pray about it because at that time we were having trouble with our deficit. At that time the deficit was like that. Today the deficit is like that, as we all know. Today the deficit is to the point that all of these programs will end unless we get control of that because our currency will go down. Would I vote for that $600 million again? Yeah, I probably would. Because I'll tell you, when, you're, when you are thinking about understanding why our body does things, uh, that is a universal, that is not child, just childhood cancer, which I am very concerned about now, and, but it is something that all diseases are going to benefit from. And so uh, let me just note that there was another bill there <coughs> about spending hundreds of millions of dollars on HDTV. And that, I posed that one. And uh, I hope Hyundai certainly doesn't, I, they do cars, I hope they don't do TVs as well. <laughs> but let me just note, we ended up spending that money on, on the HDTV, and they spent all of the money on, uh, on what they call, uh, the, it's not digital. It was what, what they call that old, uh, old, uh, the old type of television. Uh, what is it? Projection. Well, analog. It, analog. analog. That's what. They, can you imagine that they're spending all this money in analog? Well, with that said, the government can really screw things up. <laughs> and 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 when you but when you get private people involved in an effort like we have, and I'm here basically to thank Hyundai for their wonderful contributions to this cause. And, it's, and I know about that personally because uh, about six months ago, my daughter was lethargic and my wife uh, started feeling her, uh, whatever is it, near your neck. And she said, you got marbles in your neck. I, you must have an infection. And she had the blood test. And uh, that guy tracked us down that night He uh, said, you got to get your daughter over to Chalk. I, I've already called up Chalk, and they're waiting for you. Uh, you, if you're at the dinner table, which we were, 
Uh, you get off that dinner table, leave the dishes, get over to chalk right now. And we did. And uh, I will tell you, it really is a wonderful sight to go into chalk and to see Hyundai's name up there, right? I mean, what a great, what a great thing to contribute to, to know that when you're bringing my kid in at the crisis of my life and you've got a company that uh, thinks enough of us to make a major contribution to help in that moment of crisis. Uh, she is now going through chemo, and it's, she's lost her hair and everything. But I am uh, singing the praises of, uh, of Chalk and all of you who are directly trying to help those people. I mean, uh, uh, you're going, so many families going through crisis right now. So uh, whether it's direct research or, uh, or helping the families, I think that's uh, it's a laud laud laudable thing. It's, it's, a, it's something that helps prove to the world that we have soul as an American people. You know, that's, that's what it's really all about. We're, we've got, we care about each other as Americans, even though we represent every race, every religion, every ethnic group. We've even got a car company from way overseas who comes over here and comes part of this benevolent part of our society. So uh, with that, uh, thank you for doing your part to help my daughter. Uh, she will be um, successful, I'm sure. I, I, but I'm, uh, my wife is, you know, right now, every, every day we talk three or four times and she tells me about the platelets here and she had a transfusion yesterday at Chalk. So uh, uh, thanks for, for helping out.